My name is Dr. Fred Sylvester from New Hanover Chiropractic, and welcome to this episode of Health Talk. Today we're going to kind of diverge away from the traditional health talk show that we've done, and we're going to really talk about a bit of financial health. And it's a totally different animal, as I've been trying to prepare for this. Um, it's very, very educational, very informative, and I wanted to extend a greeting to our guest, Mr. John McCartan. Fred. He's been in business for about 20, 25 years. Um, he is an investment advisor, uh, investment financial advisor, and he's going to give us some ideas about how we can really start to prepare for our retirement. John, I was what really kind of prompt, prompted me to do this uh, episode was that I had come across a statistic probably about three months ago that about 60 percent of people over the age of 50 have no retirement plan, yeah, that's, that's, and that's unhealthy. That's exactly right, Fred. So, uh, go ahead. So, John, um, I want you to kind of fill us in on what are some of the strategies of what we can do to uh, further prepare ourselves to be a little bit more in a healthier situation for our financial future and for our retirement. Sure, I yeah. can do that, Fred. Great. Most people uh, that work for a, a company, they are, they are usually investing in a 401k, which is an employer-sponsored retirement plan. That's where the majority of people go, into a 401k. And they have mutual funds available to them. They invest in these mutual funds. So over their 20 or 30 years working for an organization, they should be able to attain a certain amount, a level of money sure. based upon how much they contribute over the years. Now the other way is if you're a business owner, you have a simplified employee pension plan. Okay. That, that's where you can invest your money as a business owner, which is different from a 401k. Many people uh, that aren't involved in a 401k invest in a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. If you have discretionary money or money above and beyond, beyond what you're contributing to your 401k, you can have a brokerage account where you can invest in other types of uh, assets. So, you know, what I wanted to kind of look at today is I wanted to compare and make some analogies between healthcare and financial health. And I think what we've done is we've complicated simple matters. And so, like when you're trying to lose weight, we've complicated it with trying to understand what a calorie is. Most people don't know what that is. Most people could care less what a calorie is. But long story short, when it comes to the financial health, I think a lot of people don't understand the lingo that goes with it. And I myself included, as preparing for this, was very overwhelmed by the lingo. So I'd like to start at some basics here and just okay. define what the S&P is and what a mutual fund is and what a 401k okay. is. Okay, okay, Fred, good. Well, the S&P 500 are the top 500 companies in the United States. And it's, it's an index that is a barometer of the health of the stock market. It surpasses the Dow Industrial Now, those are the smokestack companies as they refer to them. So sure. the S&P 500 would be an index that everybody watches to see how the, what, what's the health yes. of the stock market. And right now, as we know, the S&P is hitting all-time highs, the sure. Dow is hitting all-time highs. Is that good or bad? Well, it's very good right now for everybody that is in mutual funds, and their okay. company sponsored 401, or any investments. And you say, well, gee, can it keep going? Well, maybe and maybe not. What makes that, that stock market go higher? Well, investors are betting that the market can go higher based on the earnings of corporations. And so you have 500 corporations, companies in the S&P 500. Well, is that 2400 level that they're at now validated by the earnings and in actual numbers it is not. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the history of the S&P 500 over the, over the last 100 years, basically 15 is the price to earnings number, 15. Well, right now we're at 25. Mm -hmm. So you can say, well, the price really isn't validating the earnings. So there's going to be something that you have to be cautious. You have to be cautious in the market today because what's, what's made this market move up so quickly is they're, they're expecting tax reform and health care. Well, we haven't gotten either one of those yet. And investors, tr market strategists, get in early. Okay. The, the people that know how to, the stock market. So that's why they were in early. So we, we might be looking for something here as, as a correction. 10 or 20 percent difference in where that market is. What are some signs and symptoms of, um, I'll say, a sick financial system? Well, a sick, a, a, sick financial, a sick financial system would be someone that's not investing in anything because if, if, if you don't have investments when you retire, 
uh, the only thing you're going to have what is, is Social Security, and right. for most people that's bring that's fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year. Well, you you can't really live on Social Security, so your retirement number, which you're asking me, your retirement number is going to be predicated on the income that you've that you've had over the years and the money that you've been able to invest in your 401k or discretionary assets. So, a rule of thumb would be. Uh, which I use now, and we can get to how sure. I uh, how I, I use asset allocation with my clients. Is you have to you have to have uh, let's just let's just use two two hundred fifty thousand five hundred thousand seven hundred fifty thousand a million dollars accumulated, okay. and everybody's going to be at different, different levels. levels, and that's going to determine what your income stream is when you retire. Sure. Prior to retirement, Fred, we're looking to grow our assets. So now we're moving along to once our assets are there, how can we maintain those and have a, a, a consistent income stream? Sure. So that would come down to your question that you asked me on how, my asset allocation. How do I provide yes. growth and income for my clients? And you asked me about what, how do you define some of these assets? Yeah. Well, mutual funds, which are, pr are the uh, primary investment uh, 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 vehicle, in 401s, mutual funds are a basket of stocks. Okay. Could be anywhere from 50 to 200, 300 stocks. Sure. And they have, they, they are, could be an index fund, or they could be a mutual fund, a growth fund, it could be a balance fund, could be an income fund. Sure. But primarily, a mutual fund is a basket of stocks. Now, a mutual fund cannot be traded during the day, so a mutual fund is priced at the end of the day. The reason I'm bringing that up is because the market moves so quickly now, you might have a real downturn at, at 10 o'clock in the morning, so, and if you're in a mutual fund, you're really stuck until 4 o'clock. So that's why the market is moving to exchange-traded funds. Exchange-traded fund is a basket of stocks, just as a mutual fund is, but can be traded during the day. So if there is a market downturn mid-morning, you'll be able to sell an exchange-traded fund. So, so you, it's, have, you have some you have some laterality with that one. Well, right, and that's where that's where the, the that asset class is moving. Uh, most most of the large uh, mutual fund families are providing exchange traded funds now, and even into four hundred one k's, which yeah. is a good value for investors. So before we get to your model, um, so we were talking about before about you know um, age, and age determines a lot of your strategies per se. And um, also income determines that as well. But if you are, you know, at a younger age at this point, what should that portfolio look like as compared to a person who is hitting at 60? Okay, good question. Let's, let's say this. The, average, the, the basic foundation fund or investment model allocation is typically 60-40, 60 60% 40, 60 stock, 40% bond. And that's where people start. In other words, if you only have a few dollars to invest, that's what you would invest in because over time, mm -hmm. the, the return is going to be consistent. When, sure. the, when the equities are growing, the bonds aren't. When the bonds are growing, the equities aren't. So that's the perfect balance. So, so as a young person, you want to over, over balance or over, over invest in sure. stocks, growth, because they grow. So your equation could be not 65, 35, could be 80% stock, 20% bond. Can be that aggressive? Oh, yeah, the youngsters usually are. When you're 25 to 35, 40, you're 80, 20. Okay. Because over time, the, st the equities outperform the bonds. Okay. So as you're getting older now, let's say we were 65 or 80, 20. Sure. As you're getting older and getting closer to retirement, that 80 goes down to 60, goes down to 50, and when you retire, what are you looking for? You're looking for an income stream. You right. want to maintain your money that you've accumulated. So there's more risk in equities mm -hmm. than in bonds. So in retirement, just like you had alluded to before, like with Social Security, that's going to be an income stream for the people who, who are in retirement at that time. Yes. So you, we want to add to the income stream for from Social Security in addition to our investments uh, as time goes on when we get into the later years, is that correct? Correct. So right. you'd have dual you know, income streams or three income streams, however you want to look at it, but you'd have more than just Social Security. That's right. Okay. Right. So let's just let's, let's look at a, someone that's retired yeah. because be, uh, that's important now and we're getting the, the baby boomers, 78 million sure. uh, are retiring right. and they're going to be looking for income. 
So my my asset allocation model it, 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 it works to uh, provide them an income stream. So instead of the 6535 sure. that we talked about, the balance fund, my clients are going to be more 80 percent preferred stock, 20 percent equity. And we haven't explained completely the mm -hmm. preferred stock. That's what, what I wanted to get me, into what, now. You yeah. Want me to go there? Please. There are three ways companies raise money. The common stock, preferred stock, and bonds. Preferred stock is a hybrid of equities and bonds. So it trades on the market. The par for, for a preferred stock is $25. That can fluctuate because it's part stock. So that 25 can go down to 20, it can go to 15 in the stock market. The other part of the preferred stock is the coupon. Now typically the coupons that I work with are six to eight percent. So I'm saying that when I put you into preferred stock, mm -hmm. you're going to get six to eight percent on par, which is $25. The value of a preferred stock over a bond or an equity is this. That six percent, let's just use a six percent coupon, is always paid on 25 during the life of that preferred stock. So even if that $25 goes down to 20, goes down to 15, you're always going to get paid 6% on $25. So wh why does that work? Well, when you're retired, and let's just say you have uh, $100,000, how, how do I invest that? How do I preserve that? How do I get a, a consistent income stream, a preferred stock? Because you know it's going to pay 6% on, on 25, that's 800 shares, 400 shares. That would be 400 shares you would own mm -hmm of a 6% preferred stock. Right. So you're going to get that income stream every year. It pays quarterly. So that is one way, my way, of providing a consistent income stream to my clients based upon whether they have 250, 500, 750, or a million dollars. Sure. That's my main, uh, my main vehicle. Now you can complement yeah. that, Fred, with the exchange traded funds. Okay. And, that, and I use, I use uh, three index funds, mm -hmm. the S&P 500, total stock market, total international, mm -hmm. along with six sector f exchange traded funds. A sector fund is, is a fund that only, only uses uh, one asset. For, an, for example, technology would be a sector fund, healthcare, real estate, okay. energy, financial services, global materials. Those right. are exchange traded funds. So I would complement the preferred stock. Sure part of the portfolio with uh, several of these uh, exchange traded funds. Exchange traded funds. And then that gives you just diversification. Is that what you're really looking That's for? That's what you're after, diversification. diversification. So if one goes down, the other one has, right. a, has more of a balance per se to it. Yeah. And if you look, uh, basically like the S&P 500, which we mentioned early on, is, is the index most people look to. But the total, the total stock market has 3,500 stocks in it versus Correct. 500. It usually beats the S&P 500. I hmm. use that. Sure. Then you have total international uh, index. I use that because that covers the rest of the world. So we're covering oh, not yeah. only the United States, but, but the, the, all over the rest of the world. And then complementing that mm -hmm. with the exchange traded funds. Right. The top three, te technology, healthcare, real estate, those are the ones I would go to initially okay. because they have the best returns. So we were also talking about a topic before about, I think it was real money versus market money and that type uh, of stuff. And um, again, very enlightening to me, but um, I'd like to kind of share that with our viewers too, because yeah. again, you know, as a novice to it, I'm yeah. looking towards the market money yeah. as being the real value yeah. versus other things, but you have a yeah. little bit different yeah. take on that. Very good. You're a good student. <laughs> I'm trying. Very good student. What is the difference between yeah, what are uh, real money and market money? Real money uh, are the dividends that you receive from a, uh, from a preferred stock or even a bond. That's real money. When a dividend is paid, that's real money. That goes into your, that goes into your account, into your portfolio. Market money is just the account balance of your portfolio at okay. the end of a given day. Sure. That's not real money. So like right now, the S&P is like 2480 yes. today. Well, that's market money. But okay. if it has a downturn, it can go down to 2000 Where does your money go? The money goes down. So when you get dividends, that's Warren Buffett, all of the great investors of, of our day that we know of, always bought stocks that pay dividends. Gotcha. So that's where I'm going now is the preferred stock that pays dividends. 
that over time is going to perform very well for, for an investor. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting and, like I said, sometimes overwhelming and complicated uh, type of situation when you're trying to understand the dynamics of, of the financial institutions and, and the systems themselves. Um, when you're looking at this overall, you know, if somebody came to you today and said, you know, I have 100000 or a million or whatever it is in between, how would you guide them? I would guide them based on, f first of all, their age, mm -hmm. what their suitability is. That's that's the that's the word that, that in, in investment in investment terms you have to know. Suitability means what's their ability, what's their risk factor. Sure. How much are they willing to risk? Mm -hmm. Risk means how much will I put in equities? How much will I put? Let's use preferred stock. Yeah, that's sure. what we're talking about. So and then determining on what how much money they have accumulated yes. in their social security these are the two factors mm -hmm. and what do they need to cover their expenses in retirement sure that's going to determine how i at how i position their asset allocation because if they need a, a, a large amount of money in their mm -hmm. retirement that i'm going to have to take a look at more equity gotcha. right because that's the growth mm -hmm. but i i, I typically would look to say six to eight percent would give you so much of that hundred thousand sure. or that million and then I would just complement that mm -hmm. with the uh, exchange traded funds. So again you, you use that term suitability, you use the concept of their age, you know what they have available at the time and so what you're really doing is you're just trying to position them in a uh, we'll say a position not only just to grow but then also to develop an income stream later in life. That's right, That's because right. as we said earlier, and you, you, you were very, very wise to see that, is they can't afford to lose that basket, or that, that bucket sure. of money that they've accumulated. So if you're 65 years old, 60 to 65 years old, you can't afford to lose that 250 or that 500,000 in the market. Right. But you need to have money invested in some, in some form in the market mm -hmm. to, to, to keep maintain that balance. So here's a great point. So like in 2008, maybe 2007, I'm not sure when the, uh, when the, the stock market kind of went down, went into the recession. This would be a good example of some people who were at the age of 60 didn't have enough time to recover because go. of their, their age at that time. And there you go. As a person who was 20 or 25 or 30 at this point, yeah, it probably hurt, but it wasn't uh, a game changer for them. Is that, tr is that correct? Exactly. That no, that, that, that you have it exactly right. When you're young, you can afford to take more risk, more equity okay. than, than uh, income. But as you're older, as you're saying, when you get to 60, 65, ready to retire, or you're retiring, you cannot afford to lose that money. So or then you change your strategy. Stream. Yeah, so okay. that's the strategy, is, is to, protect the, the, to protect your assets, not lose them, but give you enough income right that you can sustain you can live, lifestyle. not not lose the quality of life that you've had over Absolutely. the years so you know in end and in close here what is your take home message to our viewers i mean if we have 50% of the people over the age of 50 not even thinking about it is it too late for them to even start so take home message no they should they should visit with a, a registered investment advisor and what's the like, difference like me like what I, what i do in my business because my relationship with my clients is a fiduciary relationship. In mm -hmm. other words, I'm there to work with my client sure. to help them grow their money, uh, save save their money. So, that's that's the that's the value of a registered investment advisor because I I work on a fee basis only, and typically it's one percent of assets annually. There are really no expenses in preferred stock, sure, uh, and exchange traded funds very minimal. So. A person like myself is, is works on a fee basis, not on a commission. Gotcha. And uh, I have 55 clients that I mean that I've had for sure. years and add to them every year that I have a relationship with because I see them. Here's the other value of that: I see my clients every three months. Sure. They come in and we we go over their portfolio. I explain where they are and what I'm intending to do going forward. Sure. So, John, thank you very much for coming on to the show. It was a pleasure. It's a very um, eye-opening um, educational learning curve that I just went through. Um, you're an expert that I have a lot of respect for. So thank you very much for being on our show. Thank you, Fred. My good pleasure. Good day and good health.